We are now recording. Very good. Yes, sir. Hey, if you use this as an assignment in an online class, is there a way that it takes, uh, you can get a list of the, the people that log on, or do you just have to go through in one? Good question. Not really. You can see them. I'll show you. Um, I'll show you in a minute how to um, see the participant list. But that goes away after the end of the meeting. But what I'm going to ask the remote attendees to do, since this is a good time to think about that, is to make a post in the chat window just listing your name and your email address, if you will, and anything else you like, but at least that, so that we'll have a list of the folks who attended remotely. And that's the way we usually handle that. It's a good question. So again, if you wouldn't mind clicking on the chat tool, putting in your name and your email address, we'll know you attended, and we'll send you some information later on. Very good. So we, I have a, I'll start off by showing you one of the better tricks of Zoom, which is screen sharing. Oops. I'm also going to show you here how I can mute everyone. <laughs> so if we get background noise coming in or something like that, we can take care of that pretty quickly. Only the moderator can do that. So you went to participants and then you hit what? I went to manage. Well, I have something you don't have. I went to manage participants, okay. which only the moderator has right here. Okay. And it gave me an option to, to mute everyone. That's something I can't share with people at home because it doesn't show up on a screen share. And no one will have that except the moderator. Dave, um, yes. so let's, let's say you want to set up a, a Zoom session, and I'm assuming that you set this up through, uh, uh, through the web portal for Zoom. And it's an open meeting, meaning anybody can join. Can you, can you can you send an invitation to select participants if you want a small closed meeting? Of well? course. Okay. Of course. Thank you. It's just a matter of who you notify. All right. Um, one of the neatest things about Zoom, I'm going to have to show you right away is it screen sharing. Anything that I have on my computer screen here, the video, uh, or rather anything I have underneath this on the computer screen can be shared with you at home. <coughs> if you mouse over the screen, you will see the screen share button in the center of the menu. It's a big green icon, it's hard to miss. And if I click on that, and unfortunately, and if you wouldn't mind letting me share, <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> don't make me, there we go, don't make me discipline anybody here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when, just to describe this, and I do want you at home to try this later, but when you click on share screen, you get an option to share a variety of things, including a white, a shared whiteboard, but the normal share is your desktop, which is outlined in green, the default. Then you just click a share screen button down the lower right-hand corner, and there's my desktop, and everybody everywhere is seeing that, as well as the people here in the room. I also have a little document camera running here. Let me make this a little bigger. This is our uh, agenda for today, our syllabus. But this also illustrates two things. One, the screen sharing capability is amazing. If there is next to no latency to it. You see something almost as soon as I do. And you can share anything that comes up on your screen, including, in this case, a little application that works with a little USB document camera. 
which will allow you to share documents with your attendees, which I'm doing here. Here's the, uh, the syllabus. I'm going to take a quick look at that. Those of you here in the room have that, but the people at home are just seeing it. But you could also use it like a whiteboard. And talk about it. So there's your white, your classroom whiteboard if you need it. This little camera is a uh, an IPVO, I P E V O. Point. Who needs a whiteboard? Point to view. Get it on Amazon any day for sixty to seventy bucks. And it's a great adjunct to Zoom, as well as using it in the classroom. Beats living daylights out of these things. And it's a lot cheap, a lot cheap. All right. So what is Zoom? What we're seeing what Zoom is. It's a meeting tool. It's a video conferencing tool. We can talk to one another just as naturally as if we were sitting in the same room. And if I weren't sharing my screen, we could see each other. So there's, the only thing we can't do is smell one another. Usually in my case, that's a blessing. Um, we can share screens, so that we can share anything that we might put up on the projector in a classroom, we can share, and people can see it then, because they're looking right at their monitor instead of a, squinting at a screen that may be 30 feet away. Yes, ma'am. So how did you, um, I understand that you're using a that, that little doc cam, but how did you get it off your desktop and onto something else? Hmm. So you were sharing your desktop. Right. You know? This the, the application is running on my desktop. Okay. My oh. desktop is still there. Okay, I see. I'm really yeah. So it's just a Windows application running on my desktop. Okay. And what else can it share besides your desktop? Uh, it can, sh well, normally it, if you share your desktop, the question is what else can we share other than the desktop? Well, if you share your desktop, you're sharing everything on your computer. There's nothing else to share. You can share a shared whiteboard. If I stop the share, there's a little button at the top of the screen that will allow me to do that. I can share a whiteboard. And everybody can draw on the whiteboard. You'll see a little more menu at the top of your screen if you're uh, uh, coming in remotely. And on that, there's an annotation tool. Just select that, and you can get... Uh, all kind of, there, somebody found it. Julie! <laughs> and this works great if you have something like a graphics tablet, you can write on it. And you can type text on it. No, come on, text. There we go. So just click on there somewhere, click on the screen, and then just hold down the mouse. So it's pretty standard white shared whiteboard. Really does help to have something like a graphics tablet if you want to write on it. But you can also just do your writing. Uh, yes. In, in addition to sharing your desktop and the whiteboard, can you choose to share only specific applications that are running you on your screen? You can choose to share only specific applications, though that tends to be more problematic, and it takes a lot more um, situational awareness on your part. And speaking from experience, the less you have to worry about the technology when you're trying to deal with a bunch of people, the better off you are. So my recommendation is usually just to share the desktop. But that's a good question. You do have that option. 
Dave, we have gray screens. Could you lock us out? You locking us out? These are just, we nope. just blank screens. Nope. Uh, how about those of you at home? Are you still seeing me okay? Just in the I can't even hear you. <laughs> <laughs> We're not seeing you right now. Yeah, so please move this window away from the share. Dave, I think you're still yeah. sharing your screen. Yeah. It's supposed to be, yeah. Uh, are you seeing the screen? We're seeing the mouse move, but we don't have, we have blank screens here. Hmm. Yes. On there. Screen. Well, let's, let me stop, stop the share. share screen, wow. Wow. There you go. Uh, okay. I'm not sure what that was. So you just change your. Uh, All right, there. We have the screen back now. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Not sure what that was. I must have hit some new feature. Yeah. When you go to share screen, does it automatically go to full screen? That's a choice that you make on your end. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, the question was, if you share, if I share my screen, does it automatically show full screen on your end? That's up to you. All right. Let's see. So I know what Zoom is. How can I start Zooming for free? Well, uh, Rochelle already alluded to this. So let me just make sure we got that. Uh, everybody got that. You can get a free Zoom account at zoom.us, <coughs> that's the URL, one of the new top level domains. The only limitation to this free Zoom account is that your meetings can only be 40 minutes in length, but you can start a new meeting immediately after the old one lets off. It's a little inconvenient, but you can live with it. CCC, California Community College, faculty and staff can get a free account. And let me bring up a free Zoom Pro account at Confer Now or Confer Zoom, either one will work. ConferZoom.org. You can sign up. And have a Zoom, a free Zoom Pro account in a few minutes. And that's what I recommend you do. Yes, ma'am. But we're limited to 50 students at a time. Correct? That Pro account is limited to 50 attendees, including you, at one time. Okay. You can buy more capacious accounts. The one we're using right now has a limit of 100. And you can buy accounts that will go as high as 200 simultaneous attendees. That would be eight full screens of webcams. And it still works. The stuff is voodoo. There's no other explanation. Jim. Uh, two questions. First of all, the free Zoom is not Zoom Pro. What's its level? 50. 50 people. And then the second question is, um, is there a, a Zoom uh, of some sort on Blackboard? Is one Blackboard Zoom? Not exactly, but you can integrate Zoom. Uh, the question is, how does Zoom integrate with Blackboard? Right. Uh, you can, uh, I'm going to show you how to put students or you colleagues into a Zoom meeting here in a second, and you can do that through Blackboard. You can, there is, in fact, an LTI integration of Zoom with Blackboard, but it doesn't really do that much for you. So, but Zoom works very well within Blackboard and very well within Canvas as well. So there's no problems in uh, working with um, Zoom within Blackboard. The integrated um, virtual meeting tool that is integrated into Blackboard is Blackboard Collaborate. And uh, not to put too fine a point on it, it sucks. <laughs> Use Zoom. So you suggest we get a, we have to get external to Blackboard, we get a Zoom account. Yes. And I'm going to show you how to integrate it into Blackboard. It's, there's nothing to it. <laughs> there's nothing to it. All right, we've already done screen sharing. Let me show you how one starts a Zoom meeting. I can't actually do that because I've already got one running and I kill this one. But 
There are several ways to do that, but there is a way that will avoid the only thing that I've ever seen that causes a Zoom meeting to fail, which is a situation where you're in one room and your students are in another room. And that can happen if you don't sort of follow the instructions I'm going to show you here. I am going to bring up zoom.us. And I am going to sign in. Actually, I'm already signed in. Let's see what happens when I sign in again. Your username is an email address that you use when you sign up. Quite sure what's going to happen here. Okay, that worked. Well, you're still you're still seeing me and hearing me, right? The, the world didn't fail. All right, you go. You have a series of tabs here on the left hand side when you log in, and my meetings is the third tab. You click on that, and you can schedule a meeting. Though there's really no need, as I'm going to explain, to really schedule meetings in advance through this interface. You can look at previous meetings, or you can go to your personal meeting room. And this is the key to not ending up with you in one room and your students in another. You have, associated with your account, you have this personal meeting room. That's why I'm using my personal meeting room right now. That's why I was able to put that URL into the email that I sent out that all of you remotely are using right now. You just clicked on that URL, I assume, and in you went. That's all you have to do. That URL is right here. So you can always get that. Let me see if I can get me out of the way here. There. Get out of the way. If you go to the personal meeting room tab and click start meeting, which I can't do because I'm already in a meeting. I'm skating on thin ice as it is. <laughs> click start meeting on your personal meeting room. You will be using your personal meeting room. And the session starts. It will ask you, as those of you are coming in remotely, saw it will ask you how you want to handle audio. Your two options are to use the audio built into your computer, the microphone and the speakers built into your computer, or a headset that you have plugged into it, or to use a telephone. You can dial a, a number and get the audio for the conference, and it's bridged in with the computer audio that everybody else is using. However, be aware that those are not, it'll be immediately obvious, those are not 800 numbers. We didn't pay for that. And one of them is a San Francisco number, and one of them is a New York City number. So if you don't have pretty long distance, you don't want to use those numbers. But the vast majority of the time, you're going to be using your computer audio. The computer audio in Zoom is wonderful, so much better than Skype or any of the other products that you'll find out there. Well, one thing I'll just jump in when Dave was saying is one of the ways that I've used it is that I create my own. You can change the top, the name. You, you can, can change it. So if every Tuesday night you do a live session, you can call it <coughs> whatever the name of your class is, Tuesday night. You can change six it. Six right. seven thirty. Mm -hmm. And then you can put that in your course. So every, and the students will know, every Tuesday night we have a live Zoom session. So that becomes like a, a permalink that you could. Well, and this is what you need for that. Yeah. And that becomes the link that the students would use to go to that one room that's your personal room. Yep. I have a question. Uh, does yes. that link ever change? No. <coughs> that's, no. That's what your personal meeting room means, or permalink means. That does not change. Unless you use a different account to log into Zoom. Yeah. Okay. What you don't want to do is go up here to the top, well, you can't see it now, but if you go to zoom.us, to the main page, and it says, <laughs> host a meeting up here. Don't do that. That hosts a 
an instant meeting and it generates a random meeting URL. And if you've given your students your personal meeting URL by putting it on a web link in Blackboard or emailing it to you as I did, then they're in your personal meeting room and you're somewhere else. And that has happened. So it's quite critical that you know what room you're in and that your students, your colleagues are in the same room that you're meeting with. Otherwise, it ain't gonna work. And that's the only re way I've ever seen Zoom fail. But it can happen. Can we go back to that other screen? Absolutely. We're setting up the meeting. Yeah. So just to be sure, uh, like I, the spring, uh, spring semester, I have two online classes, and I have different office hours for for the two classes because obviously you know, we have about fifty people in each class. Right. So, uh, so can I set up one one URL for uh, for the one class? You I get one study. personal meeting room. Just one personal meeting room. Okay. So, but like I said, if you were to tell the students Tuesday nights at right. this time, if you had a different group that was logging in, you may have some crossover between the students sure. in the same place. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, I, I see that I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. What I do is I make the, I have a, uh, a group in, um, or what do you call it, a folder uh, in uh, my Blackboard sites that says uh, office hours, virtual office. Uh, and then when they go there, I'll, I'll have the link and I'll have, I'll make it available earlier in the day of the, of the appropriate day, and then and then once uh, once it's uh, that is passed, then then it's done. But then it'll be back again next week. Yeah. So you could create a purple link, and I mean, students could log in. You just wouldn't be there, right? Because if you right. tell them you're only going to be there at this time, sure. they can click in there and just get a blank. So okay. The students don't need a Zoom account. No. Good question. The question is, do students or attendees of any type need a Zoom account? And the answer is no. Only you as the originator of the meeting need an account. They don't have to buy anything. They don't have to sign up for anything. All they have to do is click on that URL that you send them and bang, they're in the meeting. There is an alternative way to give them uh, access to the meeting. That is using your personal meeting ID, which is here somewhere. It's in that, there it is, your meeting ID. If you look carefully at the URL, the meeting ID is the last part of the URL. It is a you know, it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten digit number that you can send to your students. They can then go to, one way to do it is go to the, go to Zoom and join a meeting and enter that meeting ID. Bada 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 bing, hit join and they're in. Clicking on the URL is a little easier but this, this ain't too difficult either. We almost never had students who can't get in. With collaborate, on the other hand, you can count on having two or three in any group that can't get in. With Zoom, that almost never happens. Question: and Each meeting will have its uh, unique uh, that phone number, the number that ten-digit number. That number is your personal meeting ID. It does not change. Okay. Yeah. So if we go back to that one on the screen, I was just going to show them that you do have some options when you want to set up your meeting. Let's see, back out of that. Count. There we go. Yeah. So here, if you scroll. Do the personal meeting room. So if you wanted, let's say for the video, if you wanted to be the only person that could turn their video on and you didn't want students to have their videos or their pictures up, you can change this to have it be only the host is on. So the students can log in and they can all hear, they can talk, but, or you can change that too if you want it. So if you wanted just to give a presentation, but you didn't want the screen changing, sometimes that's distracting, right? If you're different people's faces or people don't realize that their camera is on. Oh, yeah, sorry. So you can change here where it says 
the host on, participant on for video. You can change it if you only want to have your video be the one that shows up and just do a lecture to the students just with the blackboard or the whiteboard. <coughs> yep. Can you do that during a meeting as well or do you have to do I think you, yeah, you, can turn the, you can turn people's um, videos off. Yes. You, Under manage participants, you yeah. can turn their video off at any time. And you can also change to have it set up within your meeting. So let's say you want to start your meeting, but you want your camera off. You can, you can just change, unclick that to turn it off so that it doesn't start with the camera. And that's something that I've noticed, just a kind of a funny story. When I've done presentations or trainings, sometimes students forget that their camera is on. And I had a student one session, and he took off his shirt, which I was like, <laughs> okay. And then he was drinking a beer. You know, he was very relaxed. And I was like, okay, you guys remember your cameras are on unless you turn them off. And then quickly his would dark. <laughs> you know, but they just don't realize sometimes because if they have the screen up where they're not showing, you know, so we want to keep it clean. This is depending on what class you're teaching. But for me, I said, you know, unless there's some reason that you want to have your face on, just turn your camera off. Yeah, we had a faculty member attend one of these sessions in his underwear on one time, and he didn't realize he had his camera on. Yeah. Fortunately, he had a bad camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just, just something to be aware of, because if you have it set up on your session where the camera automatically comes on, sometimes you don't think about the fact that you're broadcasting it to everybody who happens to be in the <laughs> And is there something at the beginning, I'm sorry, I was a little late, that yes. asks you if you want to put your camera on or off, the participants? Uh, you can select it to be off or on oh, okay. once you log in. Like I said, a lot of you here. Right there. Yeah, stop video, but since there's no cameras on these computers, your video is not going to show up. Okay, so, but they do have a camera, though, it defaults yep. on. It defaults to on. Anyway. Yep. Unless you specify otherwise. That you don't want anybody using cameras. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I just signed up, and it told me it would be verifying um, my existence, I guess, before I got um, you know, before it came live. So, uh, do we have to use our school email? No. So, how do they know you're? Do they they do don't do anything. It, it's not doing anything. Okay. <laughs> yes. Anyone can <laughs> join who has the personal meeting ID. Right, it's yeah. your email address. Your they want to make sure they're going to check your email address that it belongs to a school. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And then they'll send you an email, which then you can download. So you there can, is a vetting process yes. there. I'm okay. sorry. So yeah. don't put a Gmail, your Gmail account. Correct. Put yeah. in your district school, email yeah. address. Or, yeah, or some yeah. California community college's EDU email address. And the other thing, just to kind of be aware of, if anybody's wanting to do it in their office, depending on how locked down your computer is, that a lot of times you can't install programs onto your own computer, yes. to the work computer. Yes. Now, if it's your desktop, your own laptop, there's no issue. But, but in fact, with Zoom, that little client that comes down does not require install rights. So you can do this on your office computer if you have a webcam. Actually, you can... As a number of our folks today are attending without webcams, I think you don't have to have a webcam to attend. Right. It's really good to have one if you're presenting, but even that's not required. But you don't, if, to just join a session, you can do it from any computer. You don't have to have install rights on the computer. So, yeah. So I have a, I have a camera, but I don't know how it's hooked up. Is, there, is it easy? I just plug it in somewhere? It's a uh, question is, so what if I have a camera, but I don't have it plugged in? Yeah, if you just, if most webcams are USB devices. You just plug the USB connector into your computer, into a USB port, and Zoom should find it. Okay. You shouldn't have to go through any installation process or anything like that. Okay. Okay. Let's try it and see if it comes well, up. Yeah, and if somebody, somebody took it off and then brought it back, all those up, so I might... Just plug it in okay. and with Zoom and try it. Okay. Start up a meeting just with you and you should see yourself. Okay. And if it doesn't work, give me a call. Okay. <coughs> you bet. What, what, what's your extension? 
Uh, I, I am at uh, 7332, District Extension 7332. Thank you. You bet. Okay, so that was just a side note on that. Good. Thank you. Um, we've talked about using this on computers, but it actually works even better on phones and tablets. If I can get into my phone. Yes, it's me. Okay, there's a free Zoom app for Android and iOS. There's a little um, icon right there, a little stylized camera, just like the one on your handout. If I want to join this meeting from my phone, I just tap on the Zoom app. I hit join a meeting. This is something else you use a little camera for, a little document camera for, too. You can, if you want to show your students something on your phone, you can do that. And it just asked me for the meeting ID, which I happen to remember is 825-466-9471. And join. And bada bing, I'm in. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to activate the audio because I don't want that feedback loop. If you have a video feedback. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this will help with that. Notice that what's on my phone is the screen share. The screen share works just as good on the phone as it does on the computer, even though the screen is smaller at such high resolution, and I can pinch zoom it. <laughs> uh, let me do that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's the screen here. Of course, now I'm getting windows within windows within windows a little bit, but it works just as good on the uh, phone as it does on the computer. As a matter of fact, let me stop my screen share here so you can see. As a matter of fact, you can originate a meeting on the phone on your phone you can hold a class on your phone you can't share your phone screen but you can share uh, let's see if I can I don't think this is gonna work well I'll just mention that if you tap the screen share button on your phone you can share your photos yeah. So check those before you share. Files from your iCloud Drive, Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive, Microsoft, or you can share a website URL. Let's see if I can make that work. I'm going to share Blackboard. I'm I'm on I'm, oh there it is there it is and I'm sharing Blackboard with all of you through my phone and I'm on a really marginal cellular connection I didn't join the phone to the Wi-Fi because they changed the password the other day and I forgot <laughs> but I'm on cellular and this is working that's cool you can be you can hold class at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> And you can display documents, you can annotate them, you can do anything, you can show your PowerPoint presentations if you have them stored on Google Drive or wherever. You can pull them up and you'll be doing your lecture on the beach. So I'll just say from that, which is a great thing, but I don't know about you, I'm not super good with using my thumbs to manipulate my phone. So if I have done it, it's really just me talking to the students, yeah. trying to do the screen share, at least for me, is, is challenging to do that. But for students, we have a lot of students that will join from their phone. So that they don't have to be on a computer someplace. They can just join the session just right from their phone. Exactly. And I know Dave's joined yes. several meetings. He wasn't technically driving, but he was in a car, which was moving. Yeah, which was moving. And so I think he had it on the dashboard, or he had yep. Yeah, and so he joined the, the meeting. We didn't ask him to share his screen or anything because were you driving, Dave? 
Oh, I, actually, one day I was looking at a house in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and I was in a meeting, a steering committee meeting, and I was sharing pictures of the yeah. house <laughs> with the people back in uh, San Diego. So Couldn't end up buying that. Yeah, but pretty cool. Amazingly flexible and amazingly easy to do. There's just nothing to this to speak of. Let's see. We've, gee, we've, we've covered a lot. We've almost covered the, uh, the syllabus here. Um, I let me mention a little bit about record. Yes, got a question in the back. It's probably my you're about to jump into, but if you record this, uh huh, recording. So say not everybody can attend your online meeting. You can record it and post it. Yes. Um, but also, even in a live meeting, post captioning. Is there a way to do that? Knew somebody bring that up. Okay, first question, can you record the meeting and put it online later? Absolutely, and I'm about to show you how to do that. We, we are, in fact, recording this. And everything gets recorded. Be careful. Everything you say, everything the participants say, everything that's shared, every screen that's shared, all of that is recorded. And it's very easy to get it online. I'll go through that in a moment. Second question is, what about live closed caption? Well, there is, those of you here can see it, a closed caption option in the menu down there. There is a provision for a real-time captioner to caption uh, a meeting in progress in a window for people who need it. We don't have a captioner today, mainly because the, um, the logistics have not been set up between CCC Confer and the DECT grant and Zoom for us to get a captioner into a Zoom meeting. Yet, that's coming, so I'm told. Also, they don't have a way yet. To but Dave, if, if you were to upload this to you're Right, I'll get to that in a minute. You're absolutely if, right. If you were to upload this Exactly. And um, the, so what we're dealing with live captioning right now. So the technology exists, but it, the logistics have not been put in place yet to make use of it. So right now, if you have a known hearing impaired attendee, you don't use Zoom. You use Blackboard Collaborate, where that logistics have been put up, put in place through CCC Confer. But just like with in the Black in the CCC Confer, you have to request it ahead of time so that there is a captionist that's involved. So they are not captioning everything if you don't have a student who has request has requested a, a live captionist. So. It's not part of, I mean. That's what we don't have with yeah. Zoom yet. We don't have a way to request that captioner. <laughs> so they're working on that. And, uh oh. Uh -oh. oh, my, uh, yeah. my okay. wire popped loose there. Just say. Well, there we go. And we're back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so that's coming. But right now, if you know you have a hearing impaired attendee, you need to use Collaborate instead of Zoom. And uh, everybody recognizes that is less than ideal, but that's going to be fixed. The, I'll just tell you that almost all the state committees and the OEI, uh, Online Education Initiative and so on, when they do meetings, they use Zoom. Nobody willingly uses Collaborate anymore much. <laughs> So, recording. Recording. We are recording right now. It does tell everybody that we're recording. So I can always pause the recording if I want to say something that I don't want preserved for posterity on YouTube in a public uh, forum. I don't think I've said anything like that today. So Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, a few more minutes. Uh, well, I was going to say the other thing, too, only one person can record. Right. So, if... Dave has already set it up and set recording. If your students are set, oh, I'm just going to record the lecture or the presentation, it will, a pop up will come and say a recording is already in session. You have to get permission from the 
We got like triplicate over here. Uh, let's uh, let's try to mute anybody in the room. We got somebody in the room with speakers on. <laughs> um, yeah, you can make it possible for other people to record. If I bring up meeting participants and I mouse over, say Cheryl, and I click more next to her name, I can allow her to record. And you, multiple people can record. I don't know how what the limit is. Never, never been able to break it yet. So, recording is, but unless you allow it, no one else can record. Only the moderator. A very nice adjunct to this is something that uh, Rochelle is especially fond of. You can screencast with Zoom. So I can tell you, for me, when I want to make a video, I only use Zoom now yeah. because I can pull up, if I want to do an audio PowerPoint, I can start with the camera on myself, just my little introduction, turn off my camera, bring up the PowerPoint, and just talk through my presentation as I'm recording it. And by the time you're finished, you have an MP4. Right. Save as a, it saves as an MP4, which <laughs> then can be uploaded to YouTube. It can be uploaded to... Um, the uh, 3C. Um, to, well, yeah, 3C media. How do you edit it? So I, if I want to edit, you could go into Camtasia if you really want to do some fancy editing. But for me, really, the students are okay with me making mistakes, slowing down, pausing, just like I would do in the classroom. I mean, they kind of get the real me. They don't look too polished, but the students are okay with that. But for I, I will do my captionings in um, in YouTube. Yeah, and somebody was about to mention that before. If you we're going to take, I'm going to show you where to find this uh, video file, and you can just upload it to YouTube. And as long as the audio is not too execrable, it will be captioned within an hour or two. It won't be perfect, but it'll be fairly decent. YouTube has gotten so much better in the last year. And even fixing captions. fixing the captions in YouTube is really easy to do. Right. And you can create an entry page for your video if you want to have a, a, a static picture of something that you want to include in your YouTube video. So all of your presentations, like for me, I'll do a one that says week one. And then the next one will be week two so that I can look back easily. And the other plus is that it saves your recording on your own device. So like with others, it saves it to a cloud somewhere. This saves right to your computer. So nobody else is going to have access to it unless you decide to share it. Right. Can you put it in the cloud? You can. Yeah, you would just Actually, upload it to MP4. Yeah. Yeah. We don't pay for that with our accounts. But the, the possibility exists, the capability exists to record in the cloud. But I really don't recommend it because it is so easy. Let me share the screen again. Your recordings go to your on Windows. Go to your Documents folder. They'll go to a Zoom folder on the uh, um, Finder on a Mac, and it's just called the folder is just called Zoom. Come on. And there are all the Zoom recordings I have. They're time stamped. And date stamp, so you can tell which one. The one at the bottom is the latest one. I don't have this one yet because we're still recording. <laughs> but here's one I did. Uh, today. Nope, no, no. Oh, no, that's right. I was using another computer. This was done on September 29th. I have no idea what's in it. Um, and you get... Anywhere from three to five files. But the one you're really interested in is Zoom 0.mp4. That is the, uh, presentation. the presentation recording. It, there may be Zoom 0, Zoom 1, Zoom 2. If you have stopped the recording, 
and okay. started it up again in the meeting, you can, it'll give you multiple recording files. And I can tell you, I changed the names of these two, so sure. afterwards, I put whatever I want to call it, you know, the topic, or this was week one with the date, because I won't remember, wait, Zoom what, zero was what. And then the other thing what they putting that together, that the only way that you get to the point where you are actually saving your file is when you end the meeting for all. So it, you have to actually end the meeting. This was our technology. Okay, so that still has not been. So, so once good. you end the meeting for all, then the screen will pop up and it will show you that it's going to save the file. Right. Yep. Can we embed this oh, right into Blackboard or do we have yes. to put the link? You can do either. So you can embed it. So students don't have, they just log into Blackboard if they want. Well, once you have this video file, what we really recommend you do is upload it to YouTube. Oh, but and not you, like our office hour meeting things like this. Like, could I run this, what we're doing right now, right off the of Blackboard? We recommend against it because you only have 500 megabytes of space in your Blackboard shell. We deliberately keep that lean. We, and Blackboard's in Virginia. It's not a great media server. Right. YouTube is wonderful. And you can make the video on YouTube unlisted so that no one else will ever see it other than the people to whom you wish to share, to share it. Okay. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so if you're going to make your time on making videos of your PowerPoint, yep. you go through the same steps yep. and make a meeting. It's just you're the only person. So actually, yeah, you're just actually opening Zoom. Uh -huh. And then you are going to the, the camera doing the screen share, but it's just a, a meeting of one. So yeah. I'm the right. only person in there. Okay. Yeah, the question was about screencasting with Zoom. If you just want the recording and you don't, you're not running a meeting, you just start a meeting and you're the only one in it and you hit the record button and everything that you do is recorded. And um, it doesn't, so when you think, so once you've done that, now you want to upload to YouTube, and you say stop recording, and the meeting for all. Yep. Right. Does it come up with an option? So, um, no. You it'll just have to. It'll do just like what Dave was saying. It'll save your files into the Zoom folder. Okay. And then from there, right, so you would log into your YouTube account, and then you would just say to go to your videos upload. and then upload. I know that's at that point then that you can, it's right here, it would be public, so you would change that. Select to files to upload. Yep. Yeah, and you can set it as well as, let's ask Dave when he takes questions and let's say how much retroactive, I'm not sure how much retroactive reporting you get to see it. I'm not sure you can that. In the chat room there have been a bunch of questions. How much retroactive? Somebody's typing furiously. Oh. Somebody was wondering about students walking out of quotes of class after assignment and missing 55 out of 60 minutes. Oh. Oh. We, have, we do have some questions from the chat. Would you have? Yeah, please. And uh, we're at 2 o'clock. I don't want to hold anybody. If you have another meeting, you need to go. I understand. But uh, we will continue to ask, answer questions as long as you have it. Okay, thanks Trenton, go ahead. Uh, well, the first question was from Cynthia and she wondered if you can select uh, multiple monitors to view, to share your screen. So if you have more than one monitor, can you choose each monitor? You can share one screen at a time, but you can drag windows from between monitors and bring them in and share them from other monitors. That's a great, it's wonderful to have dual or triple monitors when you're originating a Zoom presentation because you can park windows out of sight on the other monitors and bring them in when you're ready. Okay. Okay. One other thing that just popped in my head is a reminder. If you are originating your meeting on your phone, you can't record. That's correct. You cannot record the meeting if you originate on the phone. So they can record you. Uh, yes. They, they can could. record you, you but you can't do a record. So can the only you where you can record is on an actual Yeah, they can't record device. unless you specifically give them the permission to oh, do yeah. so. So they try to and, and they have to ask. And you can say no. Yeah. Also, Dave, uh, 
Jonathan was wondering a few things. He asked if the Zoom at the Confer site uses SDCCD credentials. It doesn't, right? For the student to log in? To log in on that site? The students don't have to log in at all. Or the attendees don't have to log in at all. No, he means if he's going through Confer to get to manage things. Right. If you're going through uh, Confer, now or confirzoom.org, you do when you sign up, you have to give them your uh, district email address, your CCC EDU email address. And then he was also wondering about reporting after a meeting and knowing when students, which students attended and when they left the meeting. There's no way to know when they left, especially if they have their webcam turned off. You can require them to keep the webcam on. If that goes off, then their account is being gone. And you can go back and review the recording and tell if that happened. But there is no attendance function in Zoom. Well, then that's the whole. Well, yeah, and you could you could if you wanted to say as you know put that in part of your instructions that you know. I will randomly ask questions of the participants, and if you're not responding, I'm going to assume you're not there. Right. And uh, you, what we're, you can do what we've asked people to do today, which is to put something in the chat that indicates they were there, so that you don't have to go back and peruse the recording in gallery mode and try to figure out who's who. But there is really no attendance uh, yeah, function. Yeah, you can give a quiz. If the, but really, I mean, if the student misses the whole lecture, then they miss the whole lecture. Um, I just have a business question. Yeah. I think we can probably get that cap lifted. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, um, uh, do what they do with the e class, which is have the chat session at the very end. That's a good point. Yeah. Do this at the end of the class. I just wanted to get your, um, so you're saying that you use this to video, um, to do screen sharing. Uh, why do you think it's better than screen testing? Easier. It's really easy. The screen sharing is really easy. The uploading to YouTube is really easy. Um, because doesn't screen cast automatic automatically upload to YouTube, that was not what well, you have choices. Yeah, you have choices to be able to yeah, choice. yeah. Yeah. But I find this much easier with the screen sharing feature because everything's just right within one program and I and then I can just choose where I want to upload it. I mean screencast matic would work the same way, but then you're now using a different program and I figure I'd like less stuff on my computer. You're only using what? Zoom. No, I mean, yes. you screencast matic and you only have to use screencast matic right? Because it's just it's going to record your Right, but if I want to use, if I'm using Zoom to do presentations and I'm doing Zoom, then, yeah, then I could just have one thing. And then the interface is the same. And then is there a time, what's the time limit on Zoom again? I don't think there is one. There is no time. No, no. We have recorded sessions as long as three hours with no problems. If you have uh, the pro account, yeah. Right, if you have a pro account. If you have just the free account, it's 40 minutes per so recording session. Uh, um, if you don't get it free, if you don't get the Zoom pro account free through Confer Now, it's $15 a month. Okay. Yeah. About the same as HBO. <laughs> Any other uh, anything else on the chat? Uh, yes. This is, uh, this is Julie. I got a question. Yes. Um, I use the Zoom desktop app, so it's really easy to start a meeting either with or without video. Right. Without video. So that kind of bypasses the whole need to do a personal meeting room, right? Well, yeah. So that's what I use, yeah. And I usually just use start without, start without a, a video thing. Yeah, but you need to make sure you have your account configured so that you automatically use your personal meeting room. Oh, is that a setting? And why is that? Because if you do a, an instant meeting, even from the app, 
run the risk of having a different URL than the, or a different meeting ID than the ones that you're well, seeing. It, yeah, it just generates a meeting ID for me, which I just easily give to whoever needs to share with me. But if you have put that into Blackboard, pre, if you put a meeting ID in the Blackboard previously, you need to be sure that you're using the one that they are going to right. be going into. But that's the only, yeah, it, but that's the only kind of drawback is that it's just not a static meeting. Correct. The yeah. static, and I will tell you that will bite you sooner or later if you don't use a static meeting ID. It's certainly bitten me. You can always tell what your meeting ID is when you're in a meeting by, let's see, am I sure? Yeah. Yeah, the meeting ID is right at the top. Oh, yep. yep, the yep. Yeah. So you can verify that you're in the room you think you're in. Yeah, okay, good, perfect. Okay, great. Thanks. I've been using it for a while now and I still learned something new, so that was good. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, Dave? Uh, we had one question from Rick about scheduling separate meetings. So, I'm sorry I lost that. Uh, Rick was asking about scheduling different meetings and generating different meeting IDs. Yes, you can do that. It's not really recommended because the logistics become impossibly complex after a time, but it can be done through the schedule a meeting tool. I don't even like to mention that. <laughs> Hi, Dave. This is Cynthia Paloma. Hello, Cynthia. How are you? Very good. My question is uh, regarding the multiple monitors. So I have the laptop, and then I have a very high-res, big monitor. Mm -hmm. And will the monitor size make a difference in the recording size? Yes. <laughs> and is there a way to resize or shrink down the size of the... You can monitor? lower your screen resolution on that big monitor. Reduce the screen. Reduce it, exactly. I have another question. This is regards to audio. Right. I have a very nice microphone and a regular old headset, which I am using currently. Mm -hmm. When I use the better microphone, it's stereo. One problem I've had in the past with the, what is it, the, not, uh, not Jing, uh, maybe it was Jing, uh, is that it records in, it, it records uh, only on one side, so you only hear the output in one right. ear. Yeah, I've never noticed Zoom doing that. So I guess I'll find out. My uh, answer to you would be to try it. <laughs> and listen to it on a pair of headphones. Always do that. Okay, appreciate that. Okay. Yep, Gina. Um, speaking about, uh, if you're doing the screencasting, no, do you suggest uh, uh, headphones and a microphone? So, yes. <laughs> so what I would, what I usually do is that I will just use, I have this camera in my office, and I will use this camera that's built in just to say hello, hi, who I am, and then when I pause it, then I use the headset microphone because the audio is much clearer and you don't pick up a lot of the background noise. I just thought I need to talk to my head. I've had this problem with Springcast-O-Matic. Or like, let's say you want to record a brief clip of YouTube, something animated moving on a screen. When you see the recording and screencast about it, it's all slowed down. <laughs> this isn't. Zoom, Not on this. Zoom is, you can record a, a video and save it and the video yep, shows really yep. clearly. So that question was about recording video. While in the middle of a Zoom session, you share your screen, you play a video. Are your in, are your um, uh, attendees going to be able to see it and hear it well? Right. And the answer is yes, and they will in the recording too. Okay. It's phenomenal. I have tried to break Zoom <laughs> by having multiple recordings going at the same time and multiple videos playing and all of this going downstream and so on, and I have yet to log it down. Yep. 
It's phenomenal in that regard. The performance is amazing. Clearly, someone has sold their soul to the devil <laughs> to make this work. Did you have another question? Uh, is this what you're using when you're making the, um, <coughs> the online videos that we look for for help? Good question. Am I using this when we do the screencasts that we put on our open on demand site and so on? Usually not, for one reason. The video and the audio with, with uh, Camtasia or Snagit is just that slightest bit better, higher quality. So if it's something that we're going to keep for a long period of time and share with the world, we go for the maximum quality of video and audio that we can get. And that means a dedicated screencasting app like, screen, like Camtasia or Snagit or Screencast-O-Matic does about as well. So we have that? No. We, oh, okay. You so have we screencast -O -Matic. O matic We don't want that. Well, oh, no, there's nothing wrong with well, this. I want the best one. Well, so <laughs> let, me just, let me just tell you. So Camtasia, Camtasia is really good, but Camtasia is harder to learn to use. I mean, it, yes. it has a lot more moving parts. Yeah. It's a terrific program, but this has a couple of steps. Yeah, and this, really this for, one's easy. For my students, you know, they are perfectly fine with a Zoom MP4. The, you know, and the chances are I'll be much quicker if I just say I'm going to do a short video or a screen test like Dave was doing here with the screen share. So if I have students who say, I don't understand where am I supposed to find that information. Really quick to just say share screen, talk, click on the screen and say here in this area is where you're going to find that whatever. We'll walk through the steps of how to sign up or whatever it is. Much quicker, much easier. I mean, Camtasia is a great program, but I don't think. We have, you have to pay for that. You do, it's $169 for an educational license. And you need to, I would say, do a training on how to use it. Snag, so, snag it as well. Snag, snag it is $30 yeah, for an educational license. And it's, the recorder is just as good as the yeah. one in Camtasia. With Camtasia, you're paying pay for the editor. Oh, yeah. Okay. And somebody asked about editing. You can certainly take these MP4 files that you the recording files that you generate from Zoom and drop them into Camtasia and edit out the parts you don't want. Condense it, make it shorter and cleaner, add effects and things like that. But generally, it's really not necessary. Okay. If I were going to buy an app other than Zoom, I'd probably get Snagit. I do all my recording in Snagit. If I need to edit, I throw that into Camtasia. Then. But I rarely record in Camtasia because the Snagit recorder is just as good, and it's just slightly better than the recorder in Zoom. Well, Adam, well, you know, I don't know, I don't care about the tiers of a little bit better, but screencast it's only fifteen ninety five a year. Yeah, and it's got right. an editor built in. Yep. And you just can cut things out right there. I thought and then you don't have to transfer a file. screencast o -Matic. For the yeah. editing, I think you have to pay for it. Oh, yeah. You can just have it. Yeah. yeah. Though the, the editor in screencast yeah, doesn't right. compare in any way to the one in Camtasia, but it will work. You can edit in YouTube for that matter. Yeah, right. Isn't there, I thought there was a free screencast matic We yes. didn't have any editing, right? Limited to 15, uh, I don't think you get the editor and you're limited to 15 minutes of recording. Okay. And free. then there's Jing. And Jing is completely free, but Jing, is very limited these days. Yep. You're limited to five minutes. Correct. And uh, you can only put it on screencast.com. You can't upload to YouTube. You cannot upload Jing to YouTube. It, it saves it as SWF flash, in other words. So you need something that will, I have a, a thing that converts flash. To right, but that, that's a proprietary Swift. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. And then if you want to caption yeah. it, it's more difficult. You almost have to have Camtasia. Camtasia will load the Swifts from Jing, and you can then, look, but they're lower quality also, yeah. Oh, yeah. and much bigger. Jing is pretty much dead. Snagit is the replacement for Jing, and it's only 30 bucks. And that's a one-time cost. Hey, yes? So you said there's some planning to, um, rather than send out, several emails with frequently asked questions and stuff like that right be online to have set up a meeting within the first week 
and like, uh, okay, it's open. I'm here for an hour. Ask me anything. Right. Now I upload it to YouTube and I make it private? No. If you upload it to YouTube, you want to make it unlisted. Unlisted. Unlisted, unlisted means YouTube. no one can find it. They can't search for it. It won't pop up as a suggestion. Copyright please won't if you have background. Oh, yeah, they will. Will it? Yeah. But I, will the students that can't log in, there are chips at sea or right. whatever, can they log, get it? Yes, they can get it as long as you give them the URL. The, the I got link. the URL from YouTube. Okay. No, you get the URL from YouTube. But that's what I'm saying. I give them the URL from YouTube. They don't correct. But they don't need to log into YouTube or anything like that. They do need to be able to get to YouTube. Right. But they need that, that URL. Thank you for coming. No, I got one of the. Dave, the district staff was talking about uh, what was the first thing that all of the videos have to be captured. Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Would these videos have to be captured? Okay. Yes, is the short answer. And they will be captioned if you upload them to YouTube, but imperfectly. So then you get into a gray area. Our general advice is that if you are using this only with your class and you put and make it available only through Blackboard, we have dispensation from the state chancellor's office to use the video with the YouTube captions unedited for a semester, as long as it's not on a public website. If the public can see it, yeah, it's got to be captioned no question but if it's on a, on blackboard only and only your class can see it and you don't have a hearing impaired student you can use it for a semester and then presumably you'll just replace it with another meeting and move on but if um if you have a hearing impaired student yes it has to be captioned right then and there we can send it to the DECT grant for captioning there's a little turnaround on that but then, then you get it. That doesn't come up very often, but it does sometimes. So let's say you're not posting it to uh, YouTube. It's just a, like a live chat. <clears throat> and I'm not going to use it next semester because I'll redo it. Right. And I don't have any here in the students. You do not have to have a captioner in there, no. That's when it's okay for you to use Zoom. Because right now, unless you want to pay for it yourself, you can't get a real-time captioner in there and you would not believe what those people make so you don't want to pay for that so if you have a hearing impaired student in your class or in your meeting you need to use collaborate blackboard collaborate where you can get a free captioner from ccc confer but that will change that comes up relatively seldom and it will change but right now it is a limitation with zoom and that's just if you're going to do your videos too in zoom so I always do a transcript first. First of all, it makes it way easier for me if I'm going to be creating my video because then I'm just reading, I mean really I'm just reading out my uh, my transcript. And then when I go to Zoom, you can upload the text file. And then if there's any errors, you're just in a really minor fix. So then it's already done. You can upload that to YouTube, yeah. yeah. But that's assuming you're doing a screencast and not a live meeting. Right, right. There's no way to script a live I'm meeting. I'm doing uh, for a video right. where I'm going to save to show at a later date. Right. Or... But that is an issue we have to be sensitive to. But I will tell you that everybody in the state who can get away with it uh, in the CCCs is using Zoom for their meetings and their classes where they can get away with it rather than Blackboard Collaborate. Gina? And I think we had one back here, too. So just to, uh, again, about the YouTube captions. Like, so let's say I do four or five uh, narrated power screencasts, and then uh, I upload them to YouTube, and mm -hmm. YouTube has captioning. Yes. And then I say, <laughs> YouTube well, has captioning. YouTube has captioning. And now, am I required by law within, uh, by the next year to actually physically go into YouTube and fix the caption? If you're going to use them in a second semester, yes. Okay, and so I can go into YouTube and make an edit? Yes, YouTube allows you to edit the captions for accuracy and timing. As long as there's some evidence that I entered the caption thing, the edit caption thing. And right. Okay. 
yeah, you can you got a little wiggle room there, but not a whole lot. <laughs> so they're they're not accepting YouTube captions, grammar right? <coughs> captions. Probably not, unless they're really good. Sometimes they're so good you can't tell the difference. And ma'am, you had a question. Well, you mentioned um, putting it up. You're talking about putting the video in Blackboard and also YouTube. Well, putting a link to it in Blackboard from YouTube. You you can either link it into YouTube or you can embed. I'm sorry, link it into Blackboard or embed it in the Blackboard. But prefer not to embed it. But no, prefer not to upload it to Blackboard. Embedding is fine. You do not want to upload it to Blackboard because Blackboard's in Virginia. The video service performance is bad, and you only have 500 megabytes of disk space in your Blackboard shell. You can use that up with video in a hurry. Right. Uploading yeah. Uploading extremely large files to Blackboard is bad. Is very difficult. It takes forever for them to go up, and it takes forever for them to come back. And we don't give you enough disk space to do a lot of large files. I deal with that all the time. People are always bumping up against that 500 megabyte limit. And so, for large files, we recommend. You either put, if they're videos, we recommend you put them on YouTube or our local media server, which we will give you access to. You get much better performance that way, and you don't use up any of your 500 megabytes of disk space in Blackboard. You just web link from Blackboard to that content stored on those other locations. Good question. Anybody else? Yeah, hi Dave. Oh good, we still got somebody out there. <laughs> this is Cynthia hey, again, uh, and I put some uh, qu my questions in the chat box area. I don't and, know if Trenton's still here or not, so go ahead. Uh, he, he was on the phone, but okay. here's my question. Do you suggest that students use Zoom instead of Jing to record their screencast presentations? That's what they're doing for a final presentation in my class right now is Jing. Yeah. Well, Jing is simple and free, but Zoom is probably easier. Okay, they, uh, less friction is better. Plus, plus there's the SWF format issue, isn't there? With Jing? Yes. I think Jing exports as an SWF. Yes, it does. And not an MP4. Okay. And so SWF is required to have the flash player to view. Yes, that's an issue now. That can and become an issue, whereas I think a Zoom will export as an MP4, and that's a more universally accepted format. That's correct. And uh, you also, if you uh, put up a Swift file, even on screencast.com, people with Apple mobile devices can't view it. Okay, I've come across that. The other question is more technical in nature because this flex session was sold out on yes. <laughs> and it's not allowing me to add in late. I'm so going to ask them to pop that, uh, send me an email and I'll get uh, Mary Kingsley who has the keys to the flex system to put you in. Okay, I will do that. Appreciate that. My pleasure. Yeah, I, we're thrilled. I'm not sure what we topped out at. I, I, last time I looked, we had 25 people. Thank you for coming. We had 25 people remotely. And uh, thank you, Dave. I, I think this was successful. Thank you for coming. Yep. Anybody else? Everybody gone? Yeah. <laughs> Like There's still 10 people out there. <laughs> Some of them are the ones sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just, uh, let's see. Okay, That's I'm fine. Done. No I'm problem. Done. How do I need? Just, just please. Yep. Just X out. I'm, I'm trying to move. I'm trying to move.
Thank you. <laughs> I think that's a loss. It's the same. Thank you. It's the same. And get in touch when you have questions. No, so if you haven't gotten a, have you, Download did you get one? an email from them? Because once you sign up, don't they send you? They send you an email. You have to wait to get the email that says. Because they're the vetting you to make sure that you are. Uh, Even if he already has a, an account on a computer, he can't get it off of his phone. Like I was just online, you know. Yeah, I already oh, you mean you you yeah. logged into your account on the? Uh, but yeah, you he can't get it. Just set up. I, I said it was. Well, it's all set up, and now oh. I went on my phone. Yeah, you should be able to log in with the Zoom. Did you go with the Zoom app? You have to download the app. You have to have yeah. the app. Yeah. It won't work app. on the phone you browser. You got to have the app. app. So I I was able to do it. I joined during okay. the meetings to multitasking, right? So I joined and it said and it sent me an email and it said uh, click here to activate. Yes. And then I, I um, after I did that and then they said well we're gonna foot we're gonna bet you of course and then I got out and then I went back in with my new uh, login name and password and it put me right in. Okay, so I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and close off the recording. Thank you. Thanks, Dave.